Hey guys, I'm Sarah from Yarn Lab Canada, and this is your June lab report. I know you're thinking, I hope this isn't just another knitting podcast. Maybe it is, but hopefully it isn't. We're going to stick to the facts because this is the Yarn Lab, and I'm going to show you what I've been working on and what I finished, as well as what I have in the works for the next month. So let's jump right into it and take a look at some finished projects from June. So this here is an ombre racerback tank top. It's made from cotton that was recycled from a sweater that was originally this blue color and I dyed the yarn myself so that it would knit up in this ombre pattern from light to dark. Now this is just a demo, I'm working on this pattern currently and the idea is that in the finished pattern I'd like to include both a solid um, version as well as directions for ombre dyeing your own yarn if you want to do the color gradient. So you can Keep your eyes open for a pattern for this tank in the next month or so. Another finished project of my own design is this mini shawl. It's knit from one skein of patent self-striping sock yarn as, and a second skein uh, that I only use maybe a third of it of cascade sock yarn in the contrasting dark gray color. And it's this lovely sort of electric yellow gray and black self-striping pattern. It's knit from the top downwards, getting larger as you go. And rather than just cast off the end, we have a knitted on lace border in the gray color as we cast it off. It's just a mini scarf, but it looks really great tied around your neck with all the points sort of hanging loose. I'm going to be writing this pattern up shortly, and I'd like to include, although I haven't knit a sample, a larger version if you were to use two skeins of the self-striping sock yarn. So there's a little bit of a close-up, and the back. So keep your eyes peeled. This pattern should be up in the next week or so. Next up, and I finished this one off last night, this is an example of me crocheting to serve a need or to procrastinate from doing real work. And it's just this little envelope style clutch or pocket book. The main yarn, and you can see it's kind of, um, it's mainly blue with some yellows and greens and a gradient, is yarn that I brought back from Hawaii with me. And I'm going to say this probably wrong. It's Nadezda's crayon box, hand dyed in Hawaii, and it's called uh, Mauna Wheelie Trail. And like I said, I apologize, I'm sure I'm slaughtering the pronunciation of this. It's 100% superwash merino, and it's a uh, worsted weight. So just in case, like I said, I'm slaughtering the spelling of this. Um, this beautiful yarn that I picked up on vacation back in March, and I've been waiting for a project for it and came up with this little clutch. The contrasting color is just some uh, bits that I had left over. I think it's just Red Heart Super Saver. But I have a new day planner and I wanted a place to store it. So I thought, why don't I make a little pocketbook for it? I'll include this pattern for free on my blog. It's really just simple. All I did was chain a row wide enough to cover the length of my pocketbook and then work back and forth in single crochet rows until it was long enough to wrap all the way around. Then I decreased for the flap and included a buttonhole. Once it was done, I just single crocheted together this side, then single crocheted the trim, and then single crocheted together the second side. Super easy, sew on a button and you're done. And it makes a cute little clutch, or you can hide a book or a pocketbook, whatever you want really in here. Next finished project that I want to show you, and again, patterns should hopefully be on the way soon, is this pair of pineapples. So there's the large pineapple cushion and the baby pineapple. Um, they're both crocheted just out of Red Heart Super Saver in gold and green. And it's a really simple pattern just with these shell stitches to make it look like the outside of a pineapple. So this pattern should hopefully go up within the next week or so for purchase and will include the large and the small pineapple. I have it on Good Opinion 
that the large pineapple makes a super great cushion for sleeping on the couch. And the baby pineapples, well, they're just cute and adorable, so why not have both? So keep your eyes peeled for this pattern, hopefully in the next two weeks. I've been meaning to write it down for a while. And I believe that's it for finished projects. I do have one nearly finished project, though. This afghan is just awaiting, and I'm unraveling the border as I'm pulling it up, just awaiting the final border. But it's a super simple pattern. I believe it came out of an interweave crochet magazine, but that's just off the top of my head, so I'll have to include the actual details in the doobly-doo below. But the squares are very simple, work up very easily, and I repeated the pattern in these four pink colors, and then just included some double crochet um, borders to join the squares together. And I'm super close to being done, I just need to go around the trim two more times probably with black, and then this is ready to go in the mail to a friend of mine who's just moved to Hamilton. So not quite a finished project, but very, very close. Alright, so that's for finished projects, but up next I'd like to show you real quick some finished yarns. This past weekend, I went to, not this past weekend, two weekends ago, I went to Old Fiber Festival and completed a beginner spinning course. So here's the bag, and hopefully in the next day or two, I've got all the video together, I just need to do the editing, so check in the next day or two for a video overview of my trip to Old, as well as all of the fiber that I took home from it. But I wanted to show you some of the yarn that I spun while I was there. This here was a project that we did where we blended on hand cards a color wheel. And this is a yarn that goes in gradient. It's a two-ply. Probably, I mean, my consistency is... My consistency in diameter is pretty good. And I'd say that we're looking at something that's about a DK weight. Um... Yeah, but it goes through a gradient from red uh, through orange to yellow. The blue isn't really a primary blue, so the green didn't come out really green. And then over to the blue and finally back to a purple. And we spun this up just using red, yellow, and blue, blended the gradients on hand cards, and it was kind of a fun project for a beginner spinning class. So I'm excited to use this probably in a toque. It's 100% merino, not superwash, and uh, it's very soft. Um, I don't have any more yarns right here, but I do have some for my wall. So I'm going to bring down this one, if I can unhook it, and this one, and this one. Because all three of these, as well as more skeins of them, are going to be available for purchase in my Etsy shop this weekend. First off, I'd like to show you another blending gradient. So this is a rainbow gradient that I dyed myself and then blended together. And it goes all through the colors of the rainbow and it's plied with a just plain white single. It's relatively consistent. It probably fluctuates. I'll see if I can get that. Fluctuates between something that's, you know, on the smaller end of a DK through the smaller end of a worsted. But it works up great. And it is 100% wool. This is from the uh, Wool of the Andes base from Knit Picks. And I've got a couple skeins of these that'll be going up on my Etsy shop. Next I want to show you, because speckled and sprinkled yarns are all in the rave, but why dye them when you can spin them? And this yarn here is called Vanilla Sprinkles, and I've got a couple skeins of it as well. It's 100 grams, it's 100% merino. And if you look, it's a white undyed yarn with little bits of colored sprinkle merino yarn spun into it. And again, it's just a two-ply, and... It's 170 yards. The different skeins are a little bit different in length, but they're all 100 grams. So there'll be a couple skeins of this in my Etsy shop. Finally, I'm a big fan of recycling yarn, and this is what I call spin-cycled yarn. So what we have here, got a couple skeins of these, and I call this guy rose vines. So I'll unloop it to give you, give you a good look at it. 
So the green yarn is 100% recycled and is 53% acrylic, 23% wool, 19% nylon, 5% polyester. So one of those crazy blends that you find in commercial sweaters. And it's been Navajo applied with these little rosebuds into it. And the rosebuds are 100% wool that I dyed myself. And then it's been plied back the other way with a white single to give the yarn some good integrity and to balance it out. So they're nice balanced skeins. Probably would be considered a bulky yarn with the rosebuds um, adding some extra diameter and would look great maybe as trim or on a special project. And I've got a couple skeins of these going up for sale in my Etsy shop this weekend. So keep your eye on my Etsy shop, which is of course Yarn Lab Canada to find these and some of the other yarns that I've been working on lately. So now that the shop plug is over, let's get into works in progress. So first up for works in progress, I've decided to finally start knitting with some of my homespun yarn. So I have this homespun lace weight single. Color's not showing up great on the camera, it's a little bit better. But it's self stripy in blue and purple. And, oh, losing a couple stitches here, pulling it out of my bag. And it's knitting up into a shawl in this sort of lace pattern with the self striping. And, oh, okay. We'll get the information for you. So the pattern I'm using on this guy here is Marina. By Kate Blackburn and it was a free Ravelry download so that's the pattern page. It's a pretty simple pattern she has it in written form as well as it all charted out. I'm knitting from the chart and I find that you really only need to refer to the chart just once at the beginning of each row and then you can work the pattern across by, for memory so that's great for knitting on the go and it's living here inside my little sheet my rainbow sheet project thing. So this one here is probably not even a third of the way done and the rows are already well over 200 stitches so it's taking me quite some time but this is my in my purse on the go knitting project. I've got two on the couch knitting projects going on right now because why would you just have one thing on the go at once? And first up is, let me show you the pattern page first. I wanted to do like a summery sweater. So it's this Milana uh, summertime uh, drop stitch sweater. And I'm knitting it from, from cotton. So this is Premium Yarns Cotton Fair. Try and get that so that we don't have like Premium Yarns Cotton Fair. It's 52% cotton, 48% acrylic. Um, it's the bright peach colorway. I thought it kind of had like a nice summery salmon look to it. And it's over here on some circular needles. And there's 198 stitches in the round, so it takes a little bit of a while to go through a round. But these sort of yarn over, um, bar sections really add a lot of length without having to you know knit the eight rows that it would probably take to get through that section so this is very easy no-brainer coach knitting that I've been keeping on this coach with me the next project that I've started and it's only you know minusculely far along because I finished one blanket so I'm starting another and this is the modern log cabin blanket by uh, Mason Dixon knitting. So the pattern is really just, um, that's the baby, no, this is here. There's also the baby version. So the pattern is really just squares that are sort of built from the starting square in a log pattern style, but a little bit of a giant, more geometric look for it. And I've just started the first square. It's just worked in garter stitch back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But I'm knitting this from Karen Simply Soft in a gray, a blue, a tan, and a white. And this is going to be a gift for someone. 
hopefully finish by Christmas. <laughs> so I'll keep you updated on the progress with that as we go along. Alright, so that's it for knitting works in project, uh, works in progress. Don't really have any crochet work in progress right now, but I do have a little bit of spinning work in progress. So on my drop spindle, and this has been on here for a while, but I'm going camping this weekend, so hopefully I'll finish it up then. Just spinning a single of another one of those confetti type of bats. So I didn't make this bat myself. A friend of mine, also called Sarah, gave me this bat to spin up a while ago. And my spindle's already really full, but I am terrible for wanting to get my entire bat on one spindle. So I've got probably, you know, half more sprayed together here to go. So that's my spindle spinning project. Now, I could probably show you about 50 different want to do it spinning wheel projects because I really spin that quickly, but I'll show you the one that's currently on my bobbin right now. And it's all of this, this big fiber cloud. And what this is, is after doing my beginner spinning course in old, there's a whole bunch of bits and bobs of fiber left from all of the spinners in the room that no one wanted to take home. And because it kills me to throw out something that a sheep had to work very hard to grow, I took it all home. Some of it was sort of spun loosely, and I teased it all apart and put it into this pan for a big cloud. And I've just been spinning directly from here, uh, any which way, any colors that I feel like, into a lumpy, bumpy single that I'm going to Navajo ply into a triple, so I'll get a nice, bulky, sort of fun art yarn as a keepsake from my spinning class. So that's a great thing that you can do with any odds and ends, any bits of leftover fiber if you're like me and you don't have a drum carter, because obviously if I had a drum carter, this would all go on and make a very fun, beautiful bat. But since I'm too impatient to hand card this much fiber together and I don't have a drum carter yet, into a pot it goes and it's kind of like spinning from a cloud. Yeah. So that's on my bobbin currently. The next project that I want to work on my spinning wheel is a fiber haul from Olds. And this came from A Curious Spin is the vendor. So you can go to acuriousspin.com. And she had what she called a fiber buffet. So she had jars of all different colors of Cordale uh, top. And you could pick whatever you want into a basket. She would weigh it up to 100 grams, and then she'd run it through her drum carter with as much or as little Firestar Sparkle as you wanted. And although I included this bat in the old fiber video that will be coming up later this week, I thought I'd show it to you again right now. Because it's so pretty, and it's so soft. And I know it's cliche to do the knitting podcast, oh, I wish you guys could feel how soft this is, but really... There's nothing that compares to playing with bats of fiber when it comes to soft, squishy, yarny goodness. So, I mean, the colors are a bit overexposed from the light coming in this way, but I picked everything mostly in purples and pinks with a little bit of blue and a lot of the silvery gray. And she made this amazing bat. Just so nice. Honestly... You almost just wish that you could just make bats and bats and bats, loosely felt them together, and call it a blanket. And I'm sure you could do that, believe it or not. But this is going to be a dream to spin. I'm probably just going to Z-stripe it. Z-stripe, Z-strip, uh, however you want to call it. Z-strip it, spin it. I haven't decided if I'll do a single. Uh, no, I'm not going to do a single. I haven't decided if I'm going to do a double or a triple. But then I think it's going to be a toque. Um, this is obviously too nice and beautiful to give away, and it's going to be for me. So hopefully that'll get, well not hopefully, I know that'll get spun up in the next week or so. It's a question of when I get around to knitting it up. So that is not technically a work in progress, which I guess brings us to um, Fiber Hall. So if you stick around and subscribe, then you'll see the old Fiber Fest old fiber week sorry uh fiber haul video that'll be up in the next couple days 
and so I won't go through the fiber haul that I took home from Olds. I also won't bother showing you the boring yarn that I purchased for Works in Progress. What I will show you is the things that I'm most excited about. And right now I'm going to limit that to two major purchases. Not really major purchases. So this was picked up when I was in Toronto. And it's three skeins of Pima cotton in a super fine or lace weight. So it's, you know, very thin. It's the Diamond Lux brand, and I am very excited to knit up a shawl maybe with it, or maybe a garment, I haven't decided yet. But the colors are definitely inspired by Stephen West. If you haven't checked out, and I'm sure you've checked out before, um, the shawls and the patterns that he works on, he does a lot with this sort of, you know, neon yellow green, and so, this is a palette inspired by him, and we'll see if I make up a pattern or if I um, follow maybe one of his. So be excited. I know I am for where this is going to go. The next fiber haul came from a recent trip to Vancouver. And while I was there, I visited the small yarn shop, local yarn shop, Wet Coast Wools. And it's in the Kitsilano sort of area. And I picked up some locally dyed yarn. I haven't decided what I'm doing with it yet. So I'm going to be holding on to this for a while. First, I got two skeins from Rain City Knits. So there's the, uh, the brand or the logo, Rain City Knits. And she's from Vancouver. This is 100% Superwash Merino in a DK white and she have names for these colorways we have bright aqua and we have heather gray and I think that they'll go really great together I just don't know what yet so this is going to be on the back burner for a while now I also picked up another independent dyer from Vancouver and that's indigo moon and these are both hand dyed as well on 100% superwash merino but these ones here, I mean, it also says DK weight, but it's a smaller DK weight um, than the other. So we have Island Time. Oh, no, they're both Island Time Merino. But this one here is called Vancouver Rain as the colorway. And this one here is Ocean Mist as the colorway. And again, I picked them out because I thought that they would go together really great. Um, maybe in like a winter scarf or a winter shawl. Haven't decided yet. But that's what I'm going to show you for now for your walls. So that's all I have to show you from the month of June. Fortunately, I don't have any dyeing to show you because my apartment has been a disaster with Kevin moving in and out um, on his way to Medicine Hat. So I haven't been to the dye pot recently. But I'm super excited to get back to dyeing for July. So there's that to look forward to. I hope that you like this format. I tried to keep it short, under half an hour, and I tried to keep it straight to the yarn. So, if you like what you've seen, you can subscribe or like this video up. If you don't like what you've seen, leave a comment. I'm planning on doing a lab update video every month at the end of the month, and I'll certainly take any advice, questions, concerns into consideration when filming the next one. In the meantime, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy hooking, or whatever it is that tickles your boat. Again, this was Sarah from Yarn Lab Canada. You can find me on Etsy, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Yarn Lab Canada. You can find my blog at yarnlab.ca, and you can find me on Ravelry as Turner Classic. That's all for now. Have a good one. Boop, boop, boop.